Rational expressions are nothing more than fractions whose numerator and denominator happen to be polynomial expressions with variables in them. But because they are fractions, the arithmetic that we do with rational expressions happens in exactly the same fashion as the arithmetic that we do with rational numbers, fractions whose numerator and denominator are just numbers. So never forget that the strategy for doing something as we're about to do, for example, multiplying or dividing two rational expressions, that strategy will be exactly the same strategy as you would use to multiply or divide two rational numbers. The only degree of difficulty is that instead of manipulating numbers, for example, finding factors of numbers to cancel, um, you know, determining what are the lowest terms between a pair of numbers. Instead of doing those operations with numbers, we now have to do them with polynomial expressions instead. And perhaps the most vital skill to success in this whole process is the skill of being able to factor a polynomial expression. It's so important, in fact, that in any operation with rational expressions, whether it's multiplication and division as it is here, or whether it's addition and subtraction as it will be in our next goal topic, the number one priority and the thing you should do first is to factor absolutely everything that you see. Because it is only by factoring that we will be able to know at the end of the day what are the common factors in the numerator and denominator that may be canceled to reduce our rational expression into its lowest terms. There is no canceling before everything has been factored. So we'll start this division problem by factoring every expression that we see. 4x minus 20 may be factored by bringing out its greatest common factor of 4 and leaving x minus 5. 45x minus 40, which is underneath it, has a greatest common factor of 5 that we can bring out, leaving the leftovers 9x minus 8. So now, our first rational expression, the dividend, has been completely factored in both its numerator and in its denominator. Continuing to the divisor, 2x minus 10 may be factored by bringing out its greatest common factor of 2 and getting 2 times the quantity x minus 5. And the 9x minus 8 underneath it has no greatest common factor that's interesting that we can bring out. So I'm going to leave it in place, but I'm going to surround it with a pair of parentheses. This is going to be an important cue for us in just a moment. So now everything in this division problem has been factored. So what happens next? Next, we remind ourselves that what we're really doing is dividing one fraction by another fraction. And based on how we do this operation with rational numbers, we know what to do with these rational expressions. To divide one rational expression by another, we should instead trade the division for multiplication by replacing the divisor, the second fraction, with its reciprocal. So flip the second fraction and trade division for multiplication. When I turn the second fraction upside down, 9x minus 8 becomes the new numerator, and 2 times the quantity x minus 5, the new denominator. And we're now faced with, instead of a division problem, a multiplication problem of these two rational expressions. And again, just like with rational numbers, when you multiply two rational expressions, the result is nothing more than the multiplication of the numerators and the multiplication of the denominators. In other words, multiply straight across. I'm going to write that by just making this into one big long fraction by connecting the two fraction bars together. So that now, in the numerator of our product, we have 4 times the quantity x minus 5 times the quantity 9x minus 8. And in the denominator, we have 5 times the quantity 9x minus 8 times 2 times the quantity x minus 5. Now our multiplication is done, and we have a single rational expression for the product. The last step 
is to reduce that rational expression into its lowest terms by canceling any factors which are common to the numerator and denominator. And this is why factoring everything was so important. Without having factored everything first, we would not otherwise be able to identify what the factors are in the first place in the numerator and denominator, let alone which factors are common that may be canceled. But our numerator has been written as a product of three factors, 4 times x minus 5 times 9x minus 8. Our denominator has been written as a product of three factors, 5 times 9x minus 8 times 2 times x minus 5, so we could see it as four factors if we wanted to. Now any factor which is common in the numerator and the denominator may be crossed out. For example, the factor x minus 5 appears both in the numerator and in the denominator. That makes it a common factor which can therefore be eliminated. Likewise, 9x minus 8 appears both in the numerator and in the denominator, making it a common factor that may be crossed out as well. So already we can see that our answer is going to be a lot simpler than we give it credit for. Finally, we can continue by reducing the numerical factors in the numerator and denominator. Namely, in the numerator we have a factor of 4, in the denominator we have a factor of 2, and 4 divided by 2 can be reduced by dividing both by 2 to get 2 divided by 1. And so when the dust is all settled, all that remains in the numerator is our single factor of 2, and all that remains in our denominator is a factor of 5 and a 1, which is invisible if we choose it to be. And so this rational expression simplifies to actually a numerical expression, 2 over 5. This is not something that will always happen. It's more typical that our final answer will still have variables in it. But in this example, there were so many factors that were common in both the numerator and denominator that after all the common factors were canceled, all of our variables ended up disappearing, leaving us with the numerical fraction, two-fifths. So multiplying and dividing rational expressions follows exactly the same strategy as multiplying or dividing rational numbers. But the most important difference is that the first step we should take in the process is to absolutely factor everything in sight, every numerator, every denominator. Factor them however you can. Look for greatest common factors to factor. Uh, if you have quadratic trinomials or differences of squares, use those methods to factor. But do not do any arithmetic at all in these problems without first factoring everything in sight. Then remember how to multiply or divide fractions. If you're multiplying, you can immediately go straight across. If you're dividing, you first flip the second fraction for its reciprocal and then multiply straight across. And after that has happened, because you've already factored everything in sight, it should be simple matter to identify which factors are common to the numerator and denominator and cancel them out to reduce your answer into its lowest terms.